right, in this credit card example, we're going to see what happens when you only make the minimum payment. So assume that a credit card has an APR of 22.99%, and the minimum payment is 3% of the balance each month. If you carry a balance of $3,000, and there's no other fees or charges made during the month, let's compute the following. So what's the finance charge for that carryover balance? Well, if we take our APR, we divide it by 12 to make it a monthly percentage rate, and then we're going to multiply by the $3,000 balance. So our finance charge is $57.48. And I don't know about you, but I can buy some nice shoes for $57. So what does that make my new balance? Well, it was $3,000. Then we add this finance charge, because that's more money you have to pay. So our new balance is $3,057.48. Okay, let's calculate the minimum payment. We know the minimum payment is 3% of our balance. So I take 3% as a decimal, multiply by my new balance, and I get a minimum payment of $91.72. Now let's, let's dissect that a little bit. The minimum payment covers the finance charge. And anything left over reduces the balance. So how much does it actually reduce the balance? So if you're paying $91.72 and your finance charge was $57.48, only $34.24 is actually going towards your reducing your balance. So you paid almost $92 and your bill only goes down by $34, right? That's the depressing part of credit cards. So what would be the beginning balance of the next month? Well, I, I like to do it this way. My new balance was $3,057.48, and I paid $91.72. Therefore, my carryover balance is $29.65.76. And there's the depressing part. You start at $3,000, you make a $92 payment, and you're down to $29.65 because interest just takes over everything. So what can you conclude so far about making only the minimum payment? It's horrible right your bill it takes forever to pay off right it's going to you're you're paying so much interest that it's just you're not making a dent okay so let's talk about what this looked like in terms of a table so remember for our finance charge we're going to take 0.2299 divided by 12 and we're going to multiply by the beginning balance and that gave us 57.48 to get our new balance, we add these together to get us $3,057.48. And then we multiply our new balance by 3% to get our 91.72. To find the beginning balance for the next month, we take our new balance and we subtract the minimum payment. And that gave us $29.65.76. Now, I recommend you try this on your own because um, everything is easier when you watch somebody else do it. But try this on your own and see if you can work it out. See if you can work it out. Okay, so for month two, we take our 0.2299 divided by 12, and we multiply by our 29.6576. Now, you'll notice that our finance charge goes down ever so slightly because our bill went down, our beginning balance went down ever so slightly. And if we add those two together, we do get $3,022.58. I take that $3,022.58, and I multiply by 3% to get me a minimum payment of $90.68. And this is where I say, if you can afford $91.72, pay $91.72 every month. Because even though it's only an extra dollar four on what you have to pay this month, that dollar four will go towards your beginning balance. You're gonna owe less, you're gonna pay less interest, right? But if you're only paying the minimum payment, we take our balance of $3,022.58 and we subtract the payment of $90.68 to get a carryover balance of $29. 31.90. And then we do it all over again. So we take our 2299 divided by 12 and we multiply by our balance, 29.31.90. Again, our balance went down a little bit, so our finance charge is going to go down a little bit. We add these together and we will end up with a new balance of $2,988.07. Notice our new balance now is just under $3,000 in the third month. That's what we started with. Right, so it's very, very sad to think how long it takes to really make a dent in this. And so our new minimum payment is $89.64. Subtract new balance minus the minimum payment and you'll get the beginning balance at the beginning of month four.
All right, so hopefully you have that written down because we're going to play with this. So, so pause, make sure you have this because otherwise you got to flip back and forth. And I'm going to assume now that you have this written down. So what is the total of the minimum payments? Well, if we add all of our minimum payments together, that's 91.72, that's 90.68, and 89.64. That's a nine. So the total of my minimum payments is just $272.04. That's how much you've paid on your credit card. What about the finance charges? How much has you paid in finance charges? So 57.48, 56.82, Total finance charges, $170.47. You got nothing new, but it cost you an extra $170. How much was the starting balance decreased after these three months? Okay, I started with a balance of $3,000. After three payments, so this is the beginning of month four, my balance was $28.98.43. My balance reduced by $101.57. That's after paying over $272, and it only went down by $101. So how do these pieces compare, A, B, and C? Well, the total of what I paid in A, if you take away the finance charges, that leaves me with how much I decreased my, my pay because everything goes to finance charges first. So you, you make a payment to a credit card company, they take out what they want for, for interest and the rest goes to your balance. Anything above that goes to your balance, which is why the more you pay, the faster it's gonna go down. So what percent of your payments goes towards uh, the finance charges? So what percent of my payments. So my total payments was 272 and because that's all, all of my payments, right, whole goes on the bottom. Finance charges is just part. So 170.47 will go in the numerator. So we cross multiply, we get 62.66%. Almost 63% of your payment goes to finance charges. Think of that in terms of dollars because percent's over 100, right? So this is roughly 63 over 100. That means if you pay $100 to the credit card company, $63 goes to the finance charge, $37 goes to your bill, right? This is why credit cards love when you carry a balance because they make major, major money off of you. All right, let's do a little reflection here. How do, how do you avoid paying finance charges? Well, pay off your bill. Pay off your credit card, right? Pay your bill every month in full. Right, the whole thing, do not carry a balance. If there's no balance, there's no finance charge. I haven't paid a finance charge in probably three years on my credit card because I pay. I only put on my credit card what I can afford to pay and I pay it off as soon as I get the bill. So pay your bill in full as soon as you get it. Who benefits most, uh, the lender or the card user when only the minimum payment is made? Well, that's easy, that's the lender. And it's because you pay interest and you pay a lot of it. All right, so it's free for them. They've loaned you the money, and then you just pay interest after interest after interest on that. Consequences of poorly managing a credit card. Um, big debt. Mm, paying lots of interest. Right, there's a fabulous commercial out right now that talks about, um, you know, a couple goes out to dinner and they're like, oh, that dinner, that $100 dinner was great. I can't wait to spend $300 in interest paying it off, right? So it's all of these different things that they put things on a credit card and then they talk about how long and how much they would pay on it um, if they don't pay it off in full. It's just it's crazy. And what are some positive aspects of your credit card use? Um, you know, you, you can get points, credit card points or cash back if it's responsible. Um, and it gives you extra time to pay for items uh, to pay. So if you go somewhere today, you don't have to have the cash on you today. You can have the cash next week, and, and that works. Um, I, bought, I bought some furniture with 12 months same as cash, and they sent me my first bill said that um, if I only made the minimum payment every month, um, obviously I would not pay it off in time, and they set it up like that on purpose. And if I would only make the minimum payment with their interest rate, it would take me 37 years to pay off my furniture. My friends, I did not buy that much furniture, but their interest rate was so high and their minimum payment was so low that if I only made the minimum payment for that year of free interest, once I had to start paying interest, well, the interest was ridiculous and, and it would have just cost me an arm and a leg. So alas, don't worry, I paid it off already, so we're good. But crazy to think about that.